All right, Clear Vision Wednesday time. It's Wednesday, and I'm your host, Claudia Mühlenweg, the creator of the Natural Clear Vision Method. And today I have another super, super special guest I couldn't be more excited about. It's holistic eye doctor, Dr. Mark Grossman, and he will introduce himself in just a second. I just want to read a few highlights from his bio. So he's been doing this for the, since the early 80s, and he really has like this integrative approach from Chinese medicine, from optometry, from um, Feldenkrais, from the Alexander method. He worked in the lung disabilities field. So he's a really amazing eye doctor. If you are, I don't know the exact town you're in actually, Dr. Mark, but um, if you're in the local um, New York area, you know, this would be a great person to see. So I'm gonna bring him here on stage. So, um, hi, hello, hello, Dr. Mark. Welcome to, to the show. Hello. So, yeah, so tell us a little bit about, you know, I didn't read your whole bio because that's also underneath the YouTube description. Tell us a little bit about like, how did you get into this whole field of optometry and then specifically holistic eye care? Okay, well, thank you so much, Claudia, for having me and having this kind of service to people so they can learn to improve their vision. Because remember, vision does not happen in the eyes. The eyes are tools for the mind. Vision work and vision therapy is probably the most powerful tool on earth to change perceptions uh, and ways of being in the world. The all in Chinese medicine, all the meridians go to the eyes. All the meridians go through the heart. <clears throat> so when we're working on vision, we're affecting every part of our soul. In Chinese medicine, we call the eyes the shen, the spirit. So when you can work on your pilot light, your shen, <clears throat> it is a powerful tool to improve your vision. I personally was uh, legally blind without glasses. I couldn't see the big E on the eye chart. <clears throat> Starting in third grade, I don't wanna go through the whole story because that could take the 45 minutes, but I couldn't see the big E on the eye chart. And then as we know, with many people, what happens? We, owe, we go to the eye doctor, we, have, we put you behind this big machine, which is better, one or two, A or B, you're freaking out in a dark room, you don't wanna get it wrong. <clears throat> and what happens? You get a pair of glasses. And as my dad said, then what happens? Oh, they thank us and pay us, and then he goes, okay. And then what happens after? A year or two later, over 80 to 90% of people come back and what happens? I give them, a, I check them again after their first prescription and it gets a little worse. And what do I do? I give stronger glasses or stronger contacts. And guess what? My dad asked, then what? They thank us and pay us again. And he said, you mean you give them something and it gets worse. I go, that's right. And they thank you. I go, yes. And they pay you. I go, yes. He goes, this is a pretty good profession. <clears throat> My dad was an accountant. But I said, dad, I want to improve people's eyes. I don't want their eyes to get worse. <clears throat> so that's what happened. What happened to me? My eyes got worse and worse and worse from third grade on. I went to a, uh, <clears throat> a specialized high school in New York City called Stuyvesant High School. It was a special math and science high school. Guess what? 90% of the kids at the high school were wearing glasses. Very interesting. Oh, according to statistics, 10 less than 10% of juvenile delinquents wear glasses. That's right. How we use and abuse our eyes, it is what causes our eyes to get worse. <clears throat> Function affects structure. In China and Japan now, over 90% of kids 14 and under are nearsighted. Why? Because they're on digital devices since they've been three. These, this is an epidemic, no matter what we say. <clears throat> but what I've learned through the years, and I've improved my eyesight, I am now 66 years old. I can read without glasses. I can pass a driving test without glasses. I am free from needing something external for me to be able to be in the world. 
And it's not just the seeing part, it's a uh, embodiment. It is a powerful place within myself for me to be in the world. <clears throat> because I believe that all disease, dis-ease in the body-mind comes from relationships. Relationships to our universe, to the stars, to the uh, environment, to our country, to our friends, to our family. And when you have an imbalance in relationships, according to Chinese medicine, what happens? Stuck energy. And when you have stuck energy, it causes stagnation. And most chronic eye diseases, cataracts, floaters, glaucoma, macular degeneration, myopia, I feel, and I have 40 years of experience, have to do with relationships. Could it be that I'm just sitting in front of a computer 11 hours a day, which is what statistics show is the average amount that adults spend on digital devices? Of course. What's going to happen? Carry 50 pounds of rice on your back, you walk around bent over. Look at digital devices all day. Don't go outside. Something's got to give. Your eyes will adapt, but they'll adapt in a constricted way. So I'm so <clears throat> happy to be here today to share how your vision can get better on a physical, emotional, and spiritual place. My books that, <clears throat> I've written five books that Claudia probably mentioned in the bio. One is a, you know, let me just get it for a second, hold on. <clears throat> First of all, I wanna thank you, Mark, for like just this wonderful overview of all the different components um, that affect our vision, you know, because like you said, do the devices help? Yeah, go ahead. But, you know, it's so much more than just the near point of viewing. So, okay, I'm going to shut up and go. you go ahead. <laughs> I love listening to you. No, but, but I'm, just, I'm just grateful for what you pointed out because yes, of course, the near point <laughs> isn't helpful. And I love that you talked about relationships. To me, it's also the relationship with myself, right? And how I see the world. And, um, and then also the stress, I talk about stress a lot. And I know relationships and stress are both words that are kind of, you know, ambiguous, kind of like big words. But when you drill down, you can, like you're absolutely right, right? The stress that we have a lot of times comes from relationships. So it's kind of, you know, anyway, keep going. This, I can't wait to, I'm learning a lot. I didn't know that about Chinese medicine, to be honest. So I'm, I'm super excited to learn too. So this book, my last book is 800 pages. And we actually divided it into smaller books because it's too heavy to carry. And it's also available as an ebook, uh, I mean, as a, a download on uh, Amazon for $10. But basically, what I did is I got 2,000 peer review research studies so that doctors and people can say, yes, there is a science behind here. <clears throat> and I also have a whole chapter on the personalities. But what I want to talk about today is not only what's in the, the book on how to treat all these different conditions and also on my website, but what's not in the book. And what's not in the book is what Claudia talked about. <clears throat> what's not in the book is the relationships. And what I haven't put in that book, because it took me years to write, is we've all heard about the microbiome, the microbiome, the gut. And you've heard about the gut-eye connection. And that your gut is like your, your brain. And we know that, again, as I said in the beginning, we don't see through our eyes, we see through our mind. So in multiple personalities, all the different personalities had different prescriptions. Interesting. Neuroplasticity of the brain, which we know research has showed. If you can have neuroplasticity of the brain, you have neuroplasticity of your eyes cataracts, macular degeneration, glaucoma, myopia can be reversed, can be stagnated. Do I refer for cataract surgery? You bet, all the time. Do I refer for medication sometimes to give people for glaucoma? Totally, all the time. But we need more things in our toolkit. The eye doctors, I love eye doctors. I'm an eye doctor. I've been doing this for 40 years. But we learned very limited things in our toolkit. I believe 
that most eyeglass prescriptions are too strong. And I can give stories about that all the time because we're testing it under artificial circumstances at an, in a particular time. What if you were having a bad day? I may get a different prescription. We all know that our vision changes all the time based on our relaxation, how centered we are. So when I am looking at the gut brain connection, the gut eye connection, <clears throat> let's take it even a step further. What is our gut, our internal thing? It's our earth element. So it's not only our relationship from our gut to the eyes, it's our relationship of our gut, of our being to mother earth, to the big picture. We need to look at permaculture. We need to look at all the different things. The, if there's craziness around us and, and from COVID, from politics, from this, it is going to affect us on different levels. It's going to change the way we see the world. The goal of any acupuncture Chinese medicine treatment is balance and harmony. Our goal of balance and harmony is how we want to see the world. This is what I talk about in my greater vision book, which goes into the physical, emotional, and spiritual aspects. And what happens when we're more balanced and balance and harmony? Then we have what we're all looking for. Can we go through the world in a state of grace? Can we relate to people and not be triggered? Can we have these different relationships? Can we have discernment to know how to stay away from toxic relationships? And I'm not just talking about uh, 5G or Wi-Fi or chemical sensitivity. I'm talking, you know, I had a patient the other day her toxic relationship is her relationship with her father. Hmm, Chinese medicine, right eye, father eye. Interesting, why do some people get a cataract in their right eye before their left eye? I had a patient and she was only in her late 40s. <clears throat> we all know that cataracts usually happen later in life. I looked in her eye and I said, my goodness, you've got a cataract in your right eye. Oh, here's some homeopathic remedies. Here's some nutritional things we can do. But tell me what was going on in the last year. Oh, my dad was dying and sick and I was taking care of him and I'm going through a divorce. Right eye, father eye, male eye. I gave her the things that I, uh, nutritionally, homeopathically, herbally. She came back a year later cataract in the right eye was gone. She did not go for surgery. She had a psycho-emotional part of that cataract. And, and what happened? Her divorce was final. Her dad died. She got support. <clears throat> and her vision changed. 10 years later, she came back. What happened 10 years later? Left eye, cataract. Mother's sick now. She's somebody who somaticizes through her vision. So I'm not saying that all cataracts are related to psycho-emotional things. Sometimes you're just 90 years old and things break down and, or you've been out in the sun too long. So we, heed, we need to look at the eyes as our windows to the soul, as Shakespeare has said. They are windows to your soul. And when you're doing palming, when you're doing swinging, when you're doing the Bates method, you know, and working with Claudia, you know, I know Claudia integrates the body because if you're having tension in your eyes, you're gonna have tension somewhere else in your body. It's usually along the trapezius muscle, up to the sternocleidal mastoid, up to the suboccipitals, because this, we're gonna take a posture that's going to cut our energy off to our eyes and then the stagnation. That's why the body work and the getting the eyes and body loose, we can't separate the body and mind. You know, I just started just giving a, a whole course on yoga and vision with my uh, partner, um, Daniel Lansky, who's been a yoga teacher for 30, 40 years. Um, probably in our 
bio, we have a, a yoga and vision uh, tape that goes through all the different yoga positions that are good for the eyes, the different stretches that are good for the eyes. So I'm just looking at my time because, you know, I really, when I do give workshops or I do give classes, I usually start off with, why are you here? Why are you in Claudia's clear vision class? I am here to be in service. So my question is, what is your intention? And I really, I can go on on questions all day long. So I'd really like to um, just know that the possibility to improve your vision is there. And when you improve your vision, you improve your life. So Claudia, any comments or questions? And I can just- Yes, relate. yes. We have a lot of questions. I would love to ask you though, when it, so when it comes to the cataract and you, the, the moment that you described, right, that example. So you also gave her those kind of practical things like the herbs and the homeopathic. And because sometimes, you know, and I see that with my students too, you know, like tell me what supplements to take and tell me what eye exercises to do. And um, so what, what is your usual, like, or do you have a usual protocol or is it absolutely- personalized or do you tell her anything about the father eye or is that just something that you notice or do you give her like do you give her like relationship like you know like inner work to do I'm just curious about how you how you address that in your practice well I do I do both I'm not putting myself as as out as a therapist <laughs> so if she's working on her right eye like I was dealing with my own mother issues so when I went for therapy for that I wanted to get being the son of an accountant, I wanted to get the most out of that hour. So I put a patch on my right eye so the therapist could deal with my mother. And I accessed that even more. I mean, there's a um, psychotherapy called EMDR mm -hmm. discovered by yeah. Francine Shapiro. And I sort of discovered EMDR before I knew about it because what happened was I was working with a patient, just helping her follow my finger. And what happened? she started to get flashbacks of being uh, beaten by her father. And I said to myself, oh, they didn't teach me that in optometry school. So I just calmed down, I just breathed with her. And then years later, I learned about EMDR. And to me, that was like eyeballs get trapped in time. There are video cameras. So in terms of that woman who had the cataract in her right eye, I you know, said, you know, Go for therapy, go for counseling, get a support group, um, work with this. <clears throat> and then I gave her homeopathic scenario, eye drops, which we have on our website. Scenario has been shown in the physician's desk reference of ophthalmology for the last 50 years to be helpful in 22.5% of early cataracts. Then there's another eye drop that has N-acetylcarnosine in it. What does N acetylcarnosine do? Carnosine helps with what we call as an anti glycation agent. Glycation is when the proteins in the lens start to stick together. So, this is a nutritional uh, eye drop to help break up the cataracts. Also, nutritionally, most cataracts are low in an antioxidant called glutathione. So, we have to recommend to build up glutathione levels. And the precursors to glutathione, they're alpha lipoic acid, uh, N acetylcysteine, um, selenium, vitamin C. Uh, so these are these are the things. So I would go, go over with patients their diet. These are some nutritional supplements that they can take. You know, <clears throat> as many things as I have in my uh, toolkit, I will give them. If there's really no big psychological uh, component to it, you know, I'm not gonna talk about the right eye, left eye, mother eye, father eye. Um, in terms of, but I will always ask, what's been happening in the last year or two years before this cataract was found? Many times the nutritional and homeopathic things can either <clears throat> uh, keep the cataract from growing that quickly, sometimes reverse it, and sometimes the cataract gets worse anyway. Uh, because there's six different kinds of cataracts. It's not only the, it's not only, uh, it's the location. Is the cataract in the anterior part of the lens? Is it in the posterior subcapsulary part? Is it in the middle called the nuclear cataract? 
is it due to sugar imbalances because diabetics have a higher rate of cataracts than uh, other people because they have more glycation in their system? Is it a traumatic cataract? Is it a congenital cataract? <clears throat> so I'm looking at the type of cataract, usually using the uh, protocol that I use on my um, website, naturaleyecare.com. Uh, if we're gonna get changes, we'll get changes in the first three months. If we're not gonna get changes, we're not gonna get. <clears throat> but here's the tricky part. Sometimes the cataract might be getting better and the person's not aware of it or thinks it's getting worse. Why? Because sometimes the cataract starts break, breaking up and when the cataract breaks up, it changes the prescription. So sometimes we just need a new glasses prescription that allows more light energy to get through to get to the retina so the person can see. So we have to check the refraction after three months. Um, and because again, if the cataract's getting better, sometimes it's just the prescription because in the beginning, the, you know, the prescription didn't even help. Now, another thing that you mentioned before, which is important, are the things we can do before the cataract operation to make sure that it goes successful. What can we do after the cataract operation to help healing happen faster? And then the real thing that I'm doing so many telemedicine uh, consultations all over the country, all over the world on this is, what choices do I make? Oh my God, you know, when I went into practice, there weren't even lens implants. People had to get these super thick cataract glasses. Now, do you want a, uh, a multifocal implant? Do you want a toric implant? Oh, the multifocal implant will be $2,000 more an eye. The uh, toric implant will be $1,000 more an eye. Do you want to use the laser? Do you want to not use the laser? Uh, <clears throat> So these, all these choices out there, some are covered by insurance, some are not covered by insurance. So, you know, I have no, doesn't matter to me, but I always tell people, this is best for you. This, you know, cause nobody's gonna, the cataract surgeon is not gonna guarantee anything. And every year they're coming out with new uh, implants. So I, do you do one eye for near and one eye for far? Hmm. Then you're creating, to me, um, artificial schizophrenia. So you have one eye focused for near, one eye focused for far. Oh, you might be able to see without glasses, but then your depth perception suffers. And you may make adaptations that put more tension on your body because you'll be tilting your head when you look up close as opposed to far away. So you can use your mirror eye for close-up work. So, <clears throat> In terms of the choices that people make, it is an individual kind of thing. I had a patient who I did a consult from Utah. Hmm, should I, is it better? Should I do uh, this operation at sea level than at higher elevations? <clears throat> In his case, it was better for him to do it at lower elevations because he had issues with oxygen and breathing things. So he did breathe basically differently at different elevations. So I said, you wanna set up the best circumstances for you as possible. What material is the implant? Some people are allergic to certain kind of plastics. Sometimes I've had to do a technique called NET, which is an acupuncture technique. To, actually the person in California designed it to make somebody not allergic to it, because all of a sudden you can have a plastic in your eye that, what if you're allergic to it? Very, very rare, hardly ever happens, but you get people who do that. So we get the material and we have to detoxify them for that material. I'm not saying this happens at all, but I'm just saying, this is the kind of questions that come up. But uh, cataracts are a biggie. And again, to me, as I said in the beginning, is the why. I used to be the kid in the back of the room saying, well, why did they get a cataract in their left eye before the right? And why did they become a glaucoma in this eye versus the other? <clears throat> and the person said, the teacher said, why? 
do you want to know why? We're just going to take it out and put an implant in. It doesn't really, it's not going to change how we're going to treat it. I say, oh, I think I got to go find the why. Oh, I've got a little heart condition. Oh, why don't we just do an angioplasty or a bypass? Wouldn't I know, want to know why my diet, my stress affects it? Dean Ornish came out with a definitive study how yoga and diet and lifestyle can reverse heart disease. Do we just want to treat symptoms? Or like I say in the eyes, do we want to treat eyes? Or do we want to treat the person behind the eyes? <clears throat> That's what Bates Method does. That's what vision educators do. That's why vision educators like Claudia and Ray, who's a colleague of mine for 40, 50 years. And when I talk at the vision edu edu educator conferences, these is my community. When I lecture to eye doctors, it's like, okay. You know, I'm not saying not, a, there are great eye doctors out there, but what we learned as eye doctor school is limited. I'll be lecturing at an integrative medical symposium in February to like 1500 functional medicine integrative doctors will be there. <clears throat> and why am I excited about that? Because people, as I said before, I don't care if it's a heart condition, I don't care if it's a respiratory condition or eye condition, put your team together. Your team might have your eye surgeon to do all the tests, your, your optometrist or your behavioral optometrist or developmental, your vision educator, your naturopath or integrative medical doctor, uh, your Feldenkrais possible practitioner, your osteopath, cranial sacral. I don't know. I mean, it depends on the why you're ther a therapist. It depends on the underlying reason of why you have developed this. And going into the why not only can help your vision, whether you do surgery or not, but will help you, and as Shakespeare said, your soul's journey in this lifetime. Well, thank you. That was amazing and beautiful and about all the education and how you talk about I recently gave a talk also in front of, um, you know, holistic doctors, and I called it the biggest blind spot in health because somehow even these holistic doctors didn't really think of vision as something that could be changed. And everybody was wearing glasses, not everybody, but a lot of them were wearing glasses. So I know we are short on time and we put some resources in the chat. Um, and just a quick question, because you definitely pointed out that there is no, everybody wants that quick fix. Like how many milligrams of glutathione, for instance, it's like, you know, like how many doses? But this is so individualized, right? That's why, they, what, what is the way, before we get into a few more questions, especially about floaters, what is, um, how can, can people get a consultation with you, even if you're, they're not a patient? Or like, how can they, doesn't matter, like you said, cataract surgery really quickly. My mom had cataract surgery. The doctor did zero education. I was like, mom, what are they going to implant? Oh, I don't know. The doctor knows best. I'm like, no, what do you want? Oh, whatever, you know, like, I was shocked at the level of like zero information or education. So what is a way for them, for anybody here that's listening to maybe get some consultation or some support from you in terms of whatever their, you know, diet, the supplements, uh, surgery, is there like a, a kind of a consultation they can book? Yeah, well, there's definitely ways, because as you said, knowledge is power, education is power. We wanna, we wanna become educated consumers in the world and not give our power over <clears throat> to, the, to the doctors. And it's great that you were educating even the integrative medicine doctors because they don't know. It is a blind spot. <clears throat> I mean, that's why I wrote the books and, and lecture a lot. Uh, our website, naturaleyecare.com, has over 300 pages of protocols. My business partner, Michael Edson, will do free phone consultations with you. If you wanted a telemedicine consultation with me, uh, phone or Zoom, I do do those. I'll, you can give out my personal email, drgrossman2020 at gmail.com. For me to do that, I'd have to get a copy of your last eye records, review your eye records, and then I'll spend, you know, you know, 45 minutes, an hour, whatever I need to develop a uh, individualized protocol for you. 
but Michael will do a free consultation because a lot of times it's not what you take in milligrams, and I've done all that research, it's what you absorb. So it's like a lot of the nutritional supplements we use are intraoral or sublingual or liposomal or tinctures. How can we get it into the system so that you utilize it the best? And it also is, hmm, like we would talk about the microbiome. Sometimes it doesn't even pay to even do a lot of those nutritional things yet, unless you're working, if you, unless, if you have gut issues at the same time. So that's why like for cataracts, it's not that much of an issue because a lot of the nutrients we use are eye drops. So we use eye drops so we don't, we can bypass the, the digestive system. And then we use an intraoral uh, glutathione to raise the glutathione level. Also vitamin C has been shown to be low in people developing cataracts. But all that information is in my books and on our website for Hi. free. We have a monthly newsletter, free newsletter. Uh, we have a free uh, cookbook that we're offering that Michael gave you some links to. So we have a free eye exercise book. So um, Claudia is going to offer all those things from our website to you today. I think Michael Happy. gave you those links. You have a lot of free resources. So I just have a quick, a couple of questions that came in early that I wanted to ask that are more specific. So um, um, Nicole is asking, do you believe that floaters and vision problems are partially caused by autoimmune reactions? If so, are there particular strategies? I guess we don't have time for the strategies, <coughs> but uh, like, yeah, so autoimmune and there was no specific uh, autoimmune condition mentioned. The floaters. Okay, so Floaters is tricky too, because again, there might be a lot of different reasons for floaters. <clears throat> floaters are usually caused by a condition called the posterior vitreous detachment. The vitreous is the gel-like fluid in the back of the eye that starts to separate from the retina. <clears throat> but every floater is made of protein. So if you have problems digesting proteins, that's why sometimes I'll recommend the digestive enzymes with a digestive enzyme called protease. Now, nearsighted people, because the eye is stretched more, are more prone to floaters because than people who are farsighted. <clears throat> so again, we have to look at that. Then in terms of the floaters, <clears throat> is, it, is it due to a retinal detachment or is there flashes of light associated with it? Is there a retinal tear in there? So you do have to go to your doctor if you have floaters to just rule out any structural issues in there. <clears throat> but floaters, we have super limited things in our toolkit as eye doctors. Oh, you'll get used to it. But if you look into deeper, you know that the vitreous is made of hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is an anti-inflammatory. Sometimes floaters are due to inflammatory conditions. And if you have a deficiency in, in hyaluronic acid, it will not only affect your increase floaters, it can increase uh, uh, arthritis or pains in your joints. So I take, I don't have floaters, but I take, uh, you know, 100 to 200 milligrams of hyaluronic acid a day to, to keep myself, you know, my joints help. I even had a floater like six months ago and I go, oh my God, this is what the people are complaining about. But it was also could be that I was in an allergic environment. Again, autoimmune, inflammatory conditions can be in effect. Allergies can um, create floaters. Also, floaters also have a, um, <clears throat> a positive and negative magnetic charge to them. So sometimes using magnetic therapy can help pull the floater over and um, break it down. So floaters are interesting and it's very, very common. People over 60, I would say at least 50 to 75% of people over 60 have floaters because of the fact that the, um, the stagnation in the gel-like fluid starts to separate. Also, in Chinese medicine, <clears throat> floaters are usually related to liver meridian because the liver relates to the eye and it's stuck qi, stuck energy. So I have an herbal formula called um, Revision that has a whole bunch of different uh, herbs in there to help move the, the energy in the eye. 
also there's some homeopathic floater pellets uh, that people get. Now, a lot of these homeopathic things and herbal things, they're either gonna work or not work in the first month or two. So you don't have to stay on them forever. <clears throat> so sometimes they help with the floaters. Other things for prevention of floaters that are important is to improve collagen. Because embryologically, the skin and the eye is the same thing. So as we get the skin changes, the sclera and the back of the eye that holds the eyeball there is made of collagen. So sometimes taking biocollagen, uh, different peptides. Um, I mean, there could be bone broth. Uh, you know, you could look in your diet. So there's a lot of good. We don't we don't carry any collagen ones on our website, but there's a lot of good collagen uh, powders out there. So again. If somebody has floaters at 30 years old and is farsighted, it's a lot different than somebody who has floaters at 70 years old and is nearsighted or 70 years old and is farsighted. So again, we have a, a basic floater protocol, but to really get individualized, you have to look at age, what happened before, are you, you know, did you go, do you box? Do you do bungee jumping? Um, we have to, you know, we have to look at the whole thing. That is so interesting. And I, um, because I noticed some floaters like last year coming up and I wasn't outside mm -hmm. as much and, you know, with COVID and, and, um, and I'm, I'm a vegan. So for me, the collagen is something that I'm also interested in, generally speaking, but there is no vegan collagen. <laughs> there is. Um, but yeah, there? right. Is there? No, no, there is no specific vegan collagen, but I'm a vegan pretty much too, vegetarian. So in fact, I just um, was looking up vegan vegetarian substitutes for collagen. And there are some things up there that have the amino acids that are important. So I did look that up and I, I haven't got them myself yet, but I was just oh, yeah, doing let that me the know, other day. Let me know, because I heard somewhere that the building blocks in the body that, that whatever they call vegan collagen is not really effective. But I love what you said earlier, it's what we digest. Right. And so it's, and it could be, and that the magnetic thing sounded interesting too. Like, is that something that you teach or is that something where you have practitioners or how can people like, or you just play around with magnets? Because that's something I have not heard yet with the, with the magnets. Yeah. Well, this, it even gets a little more. And I think this is the first time I'm talking about it. Okay. <laughs> I'm working with a scientist, a neuroscientist and we are working on a way of sending sound waves through the eyes that can help break up the floaters. Wow. Because, you know, if, it's, if it could break, so well, you know, right now we're working on another device, a home unit for glaucoma to uh, measure eye pressures at home. But he feels that if it's just a protein and since it has a magnetic charge, a sound wave is frequency that we could work with breaking up floaters. So these, this is like on the horizon of things to possibly come. But, wow. but floater, floater, floaters are, they're annoying. Most of the time they're harmless, but you know, but they are an indication to me of some sort of imbalance that's going on in relationships to something. <laughs> yeah, and I love the, how you differentiate because there's a difference if you have you know, severe like glaucoma, really high pressure. And you're like, okay, we don't have time to like, you know, invest, like take the drops right now and then we can work on your emotional state. But floaters is definitely, it's an indicator. Like I call it the engine light. Like I talk about blurry vision being the engine light. So floaters is like the engine light or maybe a little less, but it's like, it's not gonna, well, maybe the engine light is not a good example. It wouldn't kill your car, right? But it's like, hey, something is not right that we should look at. So I have, I know um, Clear Vision Club, we're not gonna be able to do a Zoom chat today, but I have, you, it's so brilliant. I'm learning so much and everybody is giving amazing comments. So I just, uh, there's a couple of things we didn't talk about. So one was dry eyes. This is a common question I get too. And I usually say blinking, palming, omega threes. Um, do you have any other remedies um, other than the woman says like any, besides putting eye drops because eye drops to me reduce the tear production even more, more like traditional like, what do they call those uh, dry eye drops? The, you know, the ones that you get over the counter, right? Um, and she also said, when you put eye drops in your eyes, it normally for it to have a burning and stinging sensation. So maybe if you can share a little bit about dry eye, that would be helpful, I think, for a lot of people. 
Dry eyes, I mean, it's probably the most common condition people come into the office with. <clears throat> Dry eyes of one is usually from five different reasons. Quality of the tears, which we work with nutritionally in the omega-3s and omega-7s, which we could talk about. Quantity of the tears, the tears evaporate too quickly. Mybobian gland deficiency, where the mybobian glands aren't creating a good tear film. Hormonal issues or a combination of all of those, or some of them. So again, uh, you know, I have a whole dry eye protocol using an herbal compress, warm compresses, uh, eye mask, a certain kind of eye drops, MSM, and then a preservative free eye drop called Optase that I have on my website, uh, lid scrubs, different lid scrubs, again, and then we also have to look at the underlying reason. In Chinese medicine, the lids where the tear film is secreted by relate to the stomach and the spleen. So I do find a really big connection between H. pylori and gut issues and dry eye. That is for sure. So I have to look at their, their, um, you know, their digestive system. Uh, so again, those are the reasons why people get dry eye and there's uh, different homeopathics for it. There's different drops. There's, a, there's an order to the protocol. Uh, there's even drugs these days, Zydra and Restasis that create you know, more tears. But you know, that's the ophthalmologist first uh, you know, thing to try and, and eye drops over the counter. Those two things are like number 20 on my list because I'll have systemic issues. So, right. so it, um, so I, I mean, I, I wish, you know, we do have some dry eye protocols on our website. They work through, you know, with 50 to 75% of the people, but there could be a lot of different reasons why the person has dry eye. Excess sugar can uh, create dry eye. Uh, issues with lymph drainage. So, I mean, but I'm saying, but we have to look at diet, lifestyles, environment. It could be they just have a wood stove and they need a humidifier in their room. And all of a sudden their dry eye is, is better because it's, an, it's environmentally affected. So, you know, those, those are the reasons, but we do, you know, I've got a whole chapter on it in the book and on the website and uh, but it, it is it is individualized some a lot of times. Well, thank you so much. I know you have to go back to your patients and anybody. Which, which where are you exactly located in New York? I'm um, I'm an hour and a half north of New York City in New Paltz. Oh, okay, okay. So anybody that's listening that's local, you go see Dr. Grossman in person, and otherwise you can we talk about the consultations and the book is really. Uh, where do I have the book? Oh, here we go. You know, this book, like you said, it's like a lot of times when I'm not sure, I look at this book first because what I love about this book, and you said it's available for 10 bucks uh, as a digital copy, is that you give the, the traditional approach, the comprehensive, the, the vision, um, the Bates method kind of protocols, you give the nutritional support, the, the, the supplements, and you break it all down. So this is a book where you really find for pretty much every condition an exact protocol and... Um, but like Dr. Grossman said, it's like a symptomatic thing a lot of times, you know, and like once we covered the kind of surface stuff, digging deeper into like, for instance, dry eyes could also be suppressed emotions of not grieving, not letting yourself cry. So sometimes digging a little deeper, sometimes it could literally be the humidifier, like you said. So, um, and I think what we always, what do you, and Dr. Mark always say, say too, is like, just being more aware of those things. Like, do you notice the dry eyes only when you're there? Or is it different when you're here? Or I noticed my floaters last year. I'm like, what happened? Like, I haven't been outside. It's, you know, just the more you become aware, the more you become a detective, that then you can also give a doctor, Dr. Dr. Mark, uh, better clues as to what could be the reason versus just, you know, how many milligrams of this, which is which we all want to do, right? We all want to have this kind of quick fix. So anything else you want to share before you get back to your patients? Yeah, just like you said, is one eye more dry than the other eye? Mm, there, yeah. The different energies, the yin, the yang on different sides of the body. Um, but I want, I want to just emphasize, I mean, the work that 
Claudia does and the vegan educators is so important because you have to move your eyes and even just palming, what palming does besides, you know, this is, this is pericardium eight, this is a heart point. It's bringing your heart energy to your eyes. You're hitting all the very powerful acupressure points. It's more than just relaxing your eyes and your mind, you're also creating energy to your eyes. So, so there's even, you know, Bates was, he was brilliant. And there was there's so much more to these Bates exercises and just doing them, you know, from swinging, because it's all about awareness and discernment. And again, the more you become aware and using your vision as a portal and as an instrument to become more aware of the world around you, the more you develop discernment in your own body. And therefore, you're going to be able to pick up things and be able to do self-care on so many different issues in your life that you never thought you could. So, you know, I'm, I'm just thankful to and in gratitude for being having a forum to share this with. Um, again, Claudia will give my personal emails, drgrossman2020 at gmail.com. Um, I try to get back to as many people as I can. I get 100 emails a day and 20 calls, but I'm pretty good with the emails. Uh, but I'm only seeing patients a couple of days a week. This is just one of those days. so. I'm well, anyway, my time. we are super. I'm super grateful for having you on, and I hope. I hope. Do you have any plan on how long you're going to do the practice, or is that mm -hmm. something you don't want to share? <laughs> well, no. I'm gonna. You know, I'm gonna keep practicing. Uh, I forgot to put the lights on here. How do you like that? Um, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm doing a lot more telemedicine these days. I mean, my goal now is to educate and to train other people from eye doctors to share my work with vision educators, with the public. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, I'm, that's what I like, I like to do, so. Um, that would be awesome. I would take a course with you. I think it, it's um, absolutely important that, you know, the few optometrists are like, I don't want to even say optometrists, so holistic eye doctors like you and, that are still practicing, you know, I think it's so important that you educate more, you know, and other eye doctors too, so that the, that there's more, that we don't have to find you with a, like a needle in a haystack, you know, if you want to talk to somebody who understands this from just the, you know, um, the actual perspective that's important to actually address those things versus the corrective lenses. So thank you so much. And I super appreciate you coming on. I know it's a busy day for you and I, we will definitely have you back at some point. Um, because what you have to share is so, so, so important. And I want millions of people to hear these messages. So thank you. But I just want to just make one comment on what you oh, said. Go ahead. Just remember, Claudia says it's not, we can't pay attention to corrective lenses because they don't correct anything. They're just treating the symptom. So, you know, the doctors say, oh, corrective lenses. Then why is my eye getting worse? Exactly. It's like, you know, it's like, it's, it's, crazy. So I hope I hope this information that I shared will help you keep your precious gift of sight. My grand, just to go back to my personal story, my grandmother, who I grew up with, who lived with me, went blind from glaucoma. And I, I made it a thing that I would never let anybody go blind, especially from glaucoma. And in 40 years, I've been able to do that. So, you know, it's, it's hard. We, we, our eyes are precious. So thank you for, for being part of Claudia's uh, group. And, you know, Claudia is like one of our people out there, put it, putting it out there. And then, you know, putting it out to you all is then you need to then put it out to more people and create the hundredth monkey effect where, where people know the secret. Claudia uh, was part of, and I was part of this uh, video called, what was it called, Insight? Uh, uh, Vision 2020 from Eyesight to Insight. Nathan, our colleagues, Nathan uh, yeah. Oxenfeld and Barry Ockertel put that together. It was a lot of work. Yeah. It will give you inspiration 
there was different vision educators all over the world being interviewed. Uh, and it's it's a great video if you, I think you could rent it for $2.99. Yeah, yeah, it's on, It's I think it's vision2020movie.com, but we can double check the URL. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to give a talk for a, a master's program in holistic health uh, in two weeks, and I'm going to show the movie during that class. Oh, wonderful. And I think it's so Im it's so important for people to know this. And then, like you said, it spreads. So thank you again. Uh, nice to meet you, you all. Hopefully. We'll meet again somewhere. <laughs> I hope so too, Mark. We definitely yeah. want to get you back. Uh, so we have a little bit Q&A. So goodbye and uh, enjoy your day with your patients and helping people. And you are a wonderful, wonderful gift to the world. And I'm so happy that you spent time with us today. So bye. Bye.